So, first of all, I wish to thank for the kind invitation. And uh, second, uh, um, I want to show you my uh, conflict of interest. In particular, I take royalties from, uh, uh, for, for a new devices that I contributed to invent, and I will mention in this presentation. I think this is the only relevant conflict in this speech. Let me go back. The, the title of the session, if I understood well, is what's new in non-invasive ventilation for hypoxemic patients. And my title is uh, how to improve patient ventilator interaction with uh, referring to the masks, uh, to the interface, and to the settings. However, I wonder whether it may still make sense uh, losing time and energies to improve patient ventilator interaction when probably the last clinical study uh, indicated that hypoxemic patients are not fit for NIV. And this is the first, uh, I guess it will be for sure presented by the last speaker, the Florali study, uh, which enrolled uh, patients in three group, NIV, conventional oxygen therapy, and oxygen therapy with a high flow humidified system. And in the end, uh, in referral to the primary endpoint, there was no major difference between the three groups. And actually, in the subgroup of patients with a PAO2, FIO2 ratio below 200, uh, the improvement was in the high flow oxygen system. And uh, which is okay. I mean, that are that. I mean, nothing you can play around. However, I'm not sure to fully understand when to use what. Please note, I'm a convinced user of the devices described in that uh, in that uh, study. However, I don't think there is the perfect device for all situation. This is a slide that probably. The second speaker will present because it's his work and is, in my opinion, a clear demonstration that applying positive pressure, both PEEP and inspiratory support, to this lung, after 30 minutes of NIV, they were able to recruit lung volume and you see that uh, the amount of aerated volume was much more than 30 minutes before. I'm not sure that providing just oxygen would have generated the same type of improvement. And uh, again, a French study by Herwan Lair and the group of uh, Laurent Brochard showing that the combination of PEEP and pressure support was able to reduce the inspiratory effort and the work of breathing compared to uh, spontaneous breathing with the sole oxygen therapy. But even uh, more complex, uh, in a category of patient where I was convinced, I have to tell you, and I was wrong, that uh, NIV was making a difference in terms of outcome, the immunodepressed patients with uh, uh, hypoxemia due to pneumonia, well, again, the, the French network recently showed in a huge randomized control trial that there was actually no improvement with NIV. I do personally have, uh, in addition to the limitation of the study described by the author, three major points that I don't want to discuss here because I'm losing too much time for something is not related to my topic, but uh, the whole story is to arrive here. The NIV was applied for 60 minute session every four hours which means more or less six hours out of 24 hours. And this is not exactly what we consider a patient deemed to receive mechanical ventilation, either invasive or non-invasive. Ten years ago, which is a lot of time, by the way, with my friends Stefano Nava and Giorgio Conti, we played uh, looking at the study using NIV both as a preventive uh, tool to avoid intubation or an alternative to intubation. And regardless of the type of use, at least 16 hours of NIV a day were applied, not six. 
And uh, when it comes uh, to such a prolonged period of time, the choice of the interface is particularly important. And is important with respect to both the performance of the interface, which are not all equal, and the tolerance. Because you know what I think might have been a problem in the studies, the, the larger trial described was, the met, was a matter of comfort, especially in the first study, the comfort was much improved by the device who resulted to be the most effective. And in both cases, performance and tolerance, NIV outcome is therefore significantly affected. And uh, the chairman, I didn't play this by purpose. I mean, the, the other speakers are all presented here. The chairman, I mean, it was just by chance, believe me. Um, uh, years ago, Massimo Antonelli and his group showed that compared to the conventional oral nasal mask, the helmet, which is almost considered uh, an Italian interface, but it's used today even in other countries, was able to improve tolerance, reduce the intubations due to, uh, to intolerance, and allow application of uh, uh, more hours of continuous NIV. That, in my opinion, in these patients is an issue. And um, unfortunately, the helmet is very well tolerated, but has a very poor patient ventilator interaction. This is the time, the neural inspiratory time of the contraction of the muscle of the patient, and this is the ventilator support. You see they are completely out of a phase. And as a matter of fact, out of one transmitted breath to the ventilator, two resulted to be wasted, ineffective. And the reason, we, we spent some time trying to understand this, and in the end I can tell you, believe me, that the problem is here. You see, these are the braces that fix the helmet to the axilla of the patient. And here you have this cushion, soft cushion, which moved during inspiration, expiration, insufflation, isolation. And for this reason, and this is my patent, we, we invented this device where you don't have the braces anymore. And this is the same patients uh, with a new helmet. And we did uh, in vitro study, published intensive care medicine. And with Samir, uh, one of our fellow, Rosanna Vaschetto, spent time and they tested the device compared to the oral nasal mask and the old helmet in healthy volunteers. But in the end, the study that showed the differences is this, just published in anesthesiology a few months ago, where we compare with respect to different indexes indicating the effectiveness, the effectiveness, the performance of the interfaces, uh, the new helmet, the old and standard helmet, and the endotracheal tube that we use like a reference point. And as you see, I mean, the, the, the endotracheal tube in terms of uh, uh, pressure time product of the triggering phase of the first 200, 300, and 500 milliseconds will always outperform in the two interfaces. However, the improvement of the new helmet was definitely significantly, uh, significant and remarkable. And in the end, we found that the comfort was improved. Do you remember performance? and tolerance, so we improve the performance and the tolerance at the same time. But if you have to deal with a severely hypoxemic patient who needs several hours of continuous NIV, there is no helmet, no mask, no interface is the best one. You have to rotate the interface. And so in our unit we decided that every eight hours we just change the interface. We don't wait the patient to complain. And by the way, in the last year or two, we started to add the OptiFlow system for the periods where the patient were not receiving an AV. 
but NIV has a serious problem of interaction and uh, a lot of asynchronies have been recognized. And this is the first study where they were systematically evaluated and counted. And this author by um, Laurence Vignon and Philippe Joliet were the main uh, researcher, showed that the asynchrony group exceeding 10%, which is severe asynchrony, was present in almost half of the patients and that the comfort uh, was higher in patients with a lower amount of asynchrony. So asynchrony have an effect on this. So a few years ago we thought, well, if we have to deal with asynchrony, and these guys have, have to ventilate for many hours, why don't we get rid of synchrony and interaction, just abolishing it? And so we use this system. It's a small portable device that was never marketed by any company. Two valves. We had one level of CPAP and a second level of CPAP, something like the bi-level BiPAP, uh, APRV, whatever you want, but with a device costing probably 300 bucks. And this is the lower level, and every minute we raise the pressure up to 20 for 8 seconds. And this is the effect, and this is the increase in the end expiratory lung volume, which is FRC, if you prefer. The net effect was that compared to conventional CPAP, we were able to see an improvement in oxygenation, but only in patients with bilateral involvement, while those with single lung involvement did not improve at all, probably because we were over the healthy lung. And what is really important to improve interaction and reduce the amount of uh, leaks is clearly the presence of a software for recognition and compensation of the air leaks. However, in this very interesting study by Guillaume Canarato and uh, Laurent Brochard, it is shown that the dedicated uh, um, NIV ventilator outperform ICU ventilator even when they have uh, a dedicated NIV software. But uh, the best and unique approach to overcome the problem of the leaks is clearly a modality which does not use the pneumatic signals, flow, volume, and airway pressure, to drive the ventilator, as it was nicely shown by the group of Alexandre Moule here in Paris, showing that PSV applied with a compensation improved the amount of asynchrony compared to conventional non-compensated uh, non PSV, and that uh, the use of uh, uh, NAVA was, sorry, was significantly ameliorating the amount of uh, uh, asynchrony, and the use of the compensation system was not affecting at all the system. And in this scenario, we try to compare PSV and NAVA in a patient wearing a helmet and found that uh, NAVA was the, significantly reducing, actually in these few patients, zeroing the amount of leak. However, arterial blood gases and the activity of the diaphragm, which is the effort, or if you prefer, the drive, was not affected. And same results in terms of improvement in asynchrony, no change in arterial blood gas, and no improvement in electrical activity of the diaphragm was found by this other Swiss paper published in patients with the oronasal masks. And I have one minute, should be fine. And to overcome this problem, one of my colleagues had a good idea. And so we started to apply NAVA during NIV, setting the NAVA level at a crazy level, 15 microvolt per um, centimeters, of, uh, micro, uh, centimeters of water per microvolt, and which means blowing up a patient, and limiting the inspiratory pressure at 20 or 25 uh, at a reasonable level. The net effect is that the curve is, uh, look at this, is airway pressure, 
airway pressure with NAVA conventional, in this case the average was 1 or 1.5, and this is the same patient limited here. And uh, what we found was a significant improvement in all the indexes of performance of the ventilator. And look at this, and by the way, not shown here, we, uh, but in this specific case, uh, we are just writing the paper, I can tell you of the results. The PDI went down, significantly went down in the overall group, indicating an effect uh, much more uh, strong than before. And, uh, and look at this, this is the, we overlap the curve in PSV, green, in, sorry, uh, in PSV, sorry, blue, in uh, conventional NAVA, green, and with this approach to NAVA, red. And you see that NAVA, regardless of the modality used, uh, triggered the ventilator in advance compared to pressure support. However, the shape of the curve was identical with the new NAVA than uh, uh, with pressure support and much more performant than NAVA in a sense. And as a matter of fact, we were able, even in patients with an oronasal mask, who did not show a remarkable and significant decrease in the effort of the diaphragm, we were able to improve comfort, not shown here, and dyspnea shown in this slide. And uh, I guess I have to stop, and I wish to thank you for your attention.